infant, infants dying. But um, she's also having, you know, these revelations. This, um, she's getting information from a source that she doesn't understand. I guess that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, and she's being told that this the dilemma of the childbirth is really, you know, is a signal of man's original sin that, um, and as a result, she develops a belief and a theology that she brings to this um, this small group that um, that the the preferred style of life, the preferred way to live, is to live a celibate life, to not um, to not have sex, to not be married. She took as an example, angels in heaven do not marry. I, I almost, I'm going to go out on another limb. Do I have time to go on another quick limb here? <laughs> is, um, you know, I was thinking about, about Anne Lee and the Shaker's early sense about her as um, the second coming of Christ, or at least the announcer of the Christ Spirit's present back on earth, presence back on earth. And I, I started thinking about the four children she lost as, and this is like way out there, whack, but um, it's sort of like, a female version of the crucifixion. You know, if you think about Christ got pierced four times and she loses four children, now that's really absurd. But I like the image at least of, because after Anne's crucifixion, it begins a thousand years of peace. This is the beginning of Shakerism building the kingdom on earth. And um, and in a way, there's almost, it's almost an interesting little symbol to play with. I don't think I'd write that up and expect people to... Um, pass that one on, but I, it, to me it was a useful symbol of where Shakerism comes from. Um, people um, joined up in England, the Shakers never numbered more than about 30, um, and at a point um, following the revelation that they should live a celibate life, people fell away. Um, the core group that remained was about eight people, and they hopped on a boat, and she had a revelation that Shakerism would thrive and grow in the new land, not in England. I think the competition from other religious groups and the persecution from the church um, was a strong motivator to leave. And um, when she was told to leave, she packed up and they came here. And they arrived in America in 1774, went to New York City, um, settled there roughly for a year um, doing labor just to sort of stay together as a group. And eventually um, the money people in the group moved came up the river to Albany and purchased a piece of land out where the airport is. And the Shakers all then convened there to begin um, begin their um, church in America. And it's really under Ann Lee's direction, it was about waiting for an opening to talk about the second coming of Christ to people in the wilderness. That was sort of where, what, what they thought they would be doing. Not with the established churches, but all these sort of new light fringe groups that had moved out of Connecticut, moved out of you know Eastern Massachusetts into the frontier, um, and this was the great revivals that were going on in New Lebanon and other places. And so, um, after a couple of years in Waterfleet, Anne said it's time for us to move, and they took a three-year missionary journey around New England, looking for these groups where there might be an opening to um, to to talk about the testimony of Christ's second appearing and how people could, people who were dreaming about um, the potential second coming in America, this great um, sort of um, virgin land, um, unspoiled, um, that they would, that they didn't have to wait for that. That Anne said, you know, this has already happened, so come join us. And uh, hundreds and hundreds did. I mean, that's the amazing thing, is that hundreds of people did join. And again, very much like the Methodist groups, these groups were in Harvard, Massachusetts, and around Concord, New Hampshire, and, and around Enfield, Connecticut, and New Lebanon, New York. And at some point after traveling for three years, being run out of town by the established church again, and um, taking a certain amount of abuse, but all at the same time making a lot of converts, the Shakers went back to Waterbleed, um, where Ann Lee died about six months after that, um, returning. But she had um, witnessed to hundreds and hundreds of people, and after her death, I think once the, um, <coughs> the charismatic leader was gone, those converts said, we need to pull this thing together as a real church. We need to be a body, and 
um, that job fell really to an American Baptist minister named Joseph Meacham, who was at that time living between New Leaven in New York and Enfield, Connecticut. Um, Meacham went to the process of taking all of the, the revelations and turning them into doctrine and into practice. And so by 1787, the Shakers were able to um, form their first established community here in New Lebanon. Um, and the theology really doesn't change much from then on. Um, and at, at that point, I guess the most important things that, um, that we had from the Shakers at, at the, uh, from Anne's influence was, um, were, the, were sort of celibacy, which I know we're gonna talk about today, living in community, um, sharing common goods, and um, and the third was a, a need to openly confess sins to each other, um, so that there wasn't harboring um, resentment, harboring secrets. Um, those are probably the three major components that Meacham put into order. Um, at the same time, there's all kinds of other stuff going on, like worship practices involving dance, and um, and all of these become, you know remnants of the revelations, you know, and when, when the Shakers would go forth and labor and dance, um, it was because Ann Lee said, God never wanted us to limit how we worshiped him. So if you feel inspired to, you know, to shake and scream and wave your hands or, or dance or roll on the floor or bark like a dog, that's all, if that is how you feel you're worshiping God, that's how you should do it. So there was an openness to expression. Um, that allowed the Shakers to develop like that. So that gets us up to 1800, and wonderful. the Shakers are here, and they're established, and they have a community. So Thank you so much. That, uh, um, well, we've gotten, we, we're, we, we've recapped, we've gotten up to where we're going to start our discussion on celibacy. We're sitting in the right way, <laughs> but we haven't done something else that was very important to the Shakers. So you have in your material a song. You see it? Her. I'm sorry. To do this, um, <laughs> we, her, but would you like to state your joke again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a one time kind of guy. <laughs> her, but we're in community. Okay. So to get to this song, we first need to sing another song. It's Yankee Doodle Dandy because that's the tune. So let's do that together. One, two, three. Yankee Doodle went to corner riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up, Yankee Doodle dandy. Mind the music and the steps and with the girls be handy. Did you get that? Got the tune? All right. All right, so now let's uh, have just the men. Sing first. Peter, can I try this at home yesterday? It didn't work that well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jerry will do it once for us. Oh. Yes. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can pitch this. Come, uh, come, 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 sister, come, let's come, come, sister, come, let's all be one for you're as good as I am. There is no cause for picking flaws, for we're all going to Zion. Great, women. Come, sister, come, let's all be one, for you're as good as I am. There is no cause for picking flaws, for we're all going to Zion. All right, everybody together. Come, come sister, come, come, let's all be one, for you're as good as I am. There is no cause for picking flaws, for we're all going to Zion. Great. Don't you feel it's like you're becoming a show? It's sounds when the men sing it, then the women sing it, then we all work together. Right. Very interesting. What did you think? What, 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 what did it make you think? <laughs> there, was a, there was a strength uh, and a harshness in the men singing and a softness and a sweetness. 
And then together it was very harmonious. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess musical editing. that's what you want community to be. How am I doing, her? Good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so what is celibacy? Let's just get that out of the way really quickly. What, what is it? Suffering. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it. Nine, all right. That wasn't appropriate. Suffering for some.